Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Rick Norberger and today we're gonna talk about Fantasia Mythology. This video will contain four themes, so if you're interested in one only theme specifically, then feel free and use the timestamps that I'll provide in the video description down below. Now to start off, I'm gonna name the four themes so you know what comes your way. The four themes are, first, how the mythology starts, second, what did I get inspired by, third, how will the book implement the mythology inside the story and how important is it gonna be? And fourth, the two first gods. So if you're interested in one part specifically, feel free to use the timestamps I provided in the video description down below. And now, um, I'm gonna encourage you to watch the whole video because it's gonna be an interesting ride. So feel free to stay, grab a hold of coffee or a cocoa milk or something like that and then watch the video and I'm gonna film the different parts of the video in different locations so that you can differentiate I hate this word so that you can see that there is a difference between the sections so now let's talk mythology how does the Fenturation mythology start and why did I chose this start specifically? So I got inspired by Greek mythology because it was the first mythology I came in touch with. So many parts of this mythology is inspired by Greek mythology. So the start of the mythology is inspired by the idea that there was firstly chaos and from chaos there spawned five different entities that were the first gods or more likely the first five entities that had names is this kind of understandable i hope i don't mess this up if you know a different uh, version of the story it's okay it's just a version i am the most familiar with so i'm gonna talk about this version so in this mythology it's basically saying, yeah, there was chaos and there were five different parts uh, that spawned from chaos, so yeah, those five different parts inspired the later gods in my mythology, but I decided not to go with chaos, but more likely the nothingness, so it spawned from nothing, that there was nothing like absolutely nothing you, you can you can yeah it, I don't know how I could else describe it as as nothing because there was nothing and nothing is nothing yeah good good yeah that's great it's a great description so now I'm gonna read to you a part from book one of Thunder's Adventures called a veiled reality it's in the first chapter so it's not spoiling anything, it's literally the first thing you will read in this book, so buckle up. In the beginning there was nothing. Two entities emerged from nothing and filled the nothingness with light and darkness. These two entities were the first two deities called Dasoke and Liflantis. Dasoke and Liflantis got in, uh, I got inspired by um, characters like Hades and Persephone, but more about those two later in the video about who are the first two gods and what I did get inspired by. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, if you have any question about the start of the mythology, just ask them in the comment section below. I will possibly make a video in future where I will answer your questions from the comment section. So yeah. On to the next theme. Now to the part I'm most excited about to talk about. The, what did I get inspired by? So why did I start or more likely create a mythology for my books? Well easy, I love mythology. I first found out about mythology through my grandpa or more specifically through a book that I got from my grandpa somewhere. I don't know where it is right now, but there I read about the Greek gods and was like, oh, that's fascinating. And then I read and read and read and some t 
time in, I guess, fifth grade, um, or fifth or fourth grade, I don't know really, um, I happened to find a copy of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. So this book here, that's the original book I, well, got or bought, I don't really know right now uh, what it was, but yeah, that was the first book that I ever read from Rick Riordan, who is a big inspiration for my story, and I just, just love this series until this day, because it has so much that I love about books. It has, it has a great story. It has great characters. It's just written beautifully, and I just love the humor of Rick Riordan's books. So, yeah, that's what inspired me to write my own mythology <laughs> in the first place, most likely. But what inspired the mythology behind the start of this story? Well, as I said in the first part, the Greek myths. The Greek myths of chaos and how the world came to be. Because I always found it fascinating how people from ancient times thought our world would function. And that's what I really love about mythology, the, the thought pro process of people from ancient times who weren't able to find out about our universe like we do today so it was just so fascinating and I just love figuring out how people thought and work in yeah different times but also today I, I just love to read about people I love stories in general but if you want to know why I love stories so much and how they inspired me to become a writer, then check out the blog post I linked in the description below. And yeah, I think that is, that's about it. Now we're gonna move on to the next part of the video. Now I'm gonna talk about the part, um, how will the books include the mythology and how important will it be? So... It will be pretty much the most important thing in the book, so that's why I'm talking about it. Because the books will focus around so-called half-gods or demigods. And those demigods will have powers, and that's why the mythology will be important in the story, because that's how the magic system is explained, because the gods created the magic in the world. So that's pretty much how every character got their powers through the gods or more likely through the stories of the gods and their parent little heritage and yeah how will they get included uh, so the mythology will be included in different parts of the story there will be legendary weapons magic weapons or just like straight up meeting some of the gods like uh, let's say Myra, the god of the god of uh, fate, um, and the druids uh, you will meet in book two. But I want, don't want to spoil it, it because it's just I like Myra. It's a, a fun character to write, and yeah. But um, yeah, it, it's very very important. So that you should know. But um, yeah. I think that's about it, about the, how important will be the gods in the story, how will be the, they implemented. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about also. The gods will make appearances from time to time. Not every god will have an appearance though, because there are so many and it will be a mess if they all appear, so yeah, probably be, be they won't appear all there won't be all of the gods to get to know inside of Fantasy Heroes and Fantasy uh, Adventures, but possibly in another f future timeline or in another book series, but I don't want to spoil anything, so... Yeah. 
I think that's about it. I hope the sound is good enough because it starts to winding. <laughs> now to the last part of the video. Who are the first two gods? Yeah. Like I mentioned already in the parts before, they are called Das OK and Liflandis. And yeah, what do these names mean? So behind most of the names I decided to name the gods. There are not really the best explanations, but for Das OK and Liflandis I decided to Yeah give them names that describe who they are. Dazo is the old Frenturation word for shadow and ke is the old Frenturation word for king. So his name is Shadow King, like his epithet. That's his title. That's okay, it's not only his name but also his title. And then there is Liv Landis. Liv is of course light and Landis is the old Frenturation word for Queen. So she is the Light Queen and the Shadow King. And why did I decide to put those together at the start of the story? They contradict each other. They are rivals but also married, so that there is a power balance in the first place between shadows and light, that there cannot be light without shadow and shadow without light. So that's Kinda I got inspired by the yin yang symbol or more likely the there always must be balance in the world and that should they should represent that there is always good but there is always evil and there is always good in evil but there is always evil in good. It's they represent the contradiction of the universe. So that's what I wanted to say. They represent something that is so paradox but also fascinating for me that I just had to include it because it's just too good to not to include it and to make a rivalry out of this but also a friendship also a marriage and it's just so much more you will learn about those two characters in the story more and more with the time and I hope you will love them as I do, because I think they are great characters and I think the idea of the characters has really 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 big potential to yeah, pay the story off, but you will see. So and that's it, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed the video, like if you did and subscribe if you did even more. If you want to have more videos like this then write a comment down below and yeah I will see what I can do in the future but yeah that's about it for today glad you watched and yeah